In episode 6, the queen gets ready to host that wedding. The only real big concern she has is that the king's wing gets locked. She doesn't want anyone finding their way in there and seeing him in such a sad state. She's also convinced that this day will be the day that she finally finds out who Whistledown is. But one person is getting nervous. That's Edwina. The closer it comes to wedding day, the more she's realizing that maybe the Viscount isn't into her as much as she's into him. One of the things that she points to is the fact that the Viscount doesn't really look at her very long. But Kate and Lady Mary end up talking her out of it, saying, that's ridiculous, don't read too much into it. To Antony, though, this is nothing more than fulfilling his duty. The whole town is getting ready to attend this wedding, including the Featheringtons. And this is going to be step one in Lady Featherington's scheme to con just about everybody out of their money. Prudence is going to wear one of Cousin Jack's fake ruby necklaces. Since she already kind of brings a lot of attention upon herself, she's going to tell everybody where she got that necklace. That should lead to a bunch of husbands and guys at the wedding to find their way to Cousin Jack and want to invest. When Lady Featherington explains this to Cousin Jack, he all but admits that he has a thing for her, which is a little bit awkward since he's planning on marrying her daughter. Penelope is also planning to attend the wedding, but first, she has to talk to the Modiste. She calls for the Modiste to meet her at the Featherington household, which is a risk because there's no reason for the Modiste to be there. She's not delivering a dress. She starts asking the Modiste what exactly she knows about Theo Sharp, but the Modiste doesn't know anything. And it's such a curious question that the Modiste starts to get concerned that there's something bigger involved. And she can't risk that for her business. Penelope reassures her that there is nothing bigger. And when Lady Featherington comes down and sees that the Modiste is at her house, the Modiste is forced to come up with an excuse on why she's there and head on out. Now it's just time to get married. Antony is at the Bridgerton household and he's all ready to go. Edwina is at the castle getting dressed. Everybody shows up at the castle, including Lady Danbury, who walks up to Lady Bridgerton and makes mention of the fact that they haven't talked since their awkward dinner with the Sheffields. These two women were once friends, and Lady Bridgerton points out, there's no reason for us to talk. It's not like you'd reveal any late secrets that you might have. Lady Bridgerton's still pretty pissed off, and she does blame Lady Danbury because Lady Danbury did know about the secret. As soon as Penelope shows up, she goes and finds Eloise, and they start comparing weddings between this one and last year's with Daphne. This segues into a conversation about Whistledown and how much power she has, and when Penelope points out that Whistledown writes about everybody, Eloise says, no, she doesn't. I mean, there are people outside of the town that deserve attention too. And Penelope grabs her to the side and says, are you speaking of Theo? Are you still seeing him? And while Eloise knows about Penelope's warning, and she does know that it'd be foolish for her to continue to see Theo, she's continued to do so anyway. She does reassure Penelope, though, that it's only his thoughts that she's interested in, which is something that I hear constantly from women. Upstairs, Benedict is helping Antony get ready, but that's when Daphne walks in. Daphne knows that Antony's making a mistake, and Antony says, we can't turn back now. It's too late in the process, and it would ruin not only her family, but ours as well. But Daphne didn't come here to talk about Edwina. Daphne came here to talk about Kate. It's obvious to most women that see the two interact that there's something going on between the two. Antony assures Daphne that they both have decided nothing can go on between the two. The conversation turns pretty contentious when Daphne brings up their father and how much Antony has changed since his death. Daphne pointing out that he can choose to be happy and Antony bringing up the fact that he's not going to give in a love. It ends with Daphne telling him that she mourns for him because the things that he does that he thinks will bring him respect actually make the entire family pity him. This is just yet another decision that makes them pity him. Now it's just time to make the walk down the aisle. But as the priest is saying the vows, it comes time for Antony to repeat them. But Antony isn't listening to the priest because he can't stop staring at Kate. It's something that Edwina notices. That's the look that she was talking about. The look that the Viscount does not give her. It finally all clicks for Edwina and she runs out of the room yelling, I need a moment. For the time being, the wedding is put on pause as Lady Mary and Kate chase after Edwina to find out what the hell is going on. But as Lady Mary is trying to de-escalate the situation and calm Edwina down, Edwina has had enough. She yells, I want the truth. I can't believe you. All this time, you had feelings for him and you wanted him for yourself. Edwina feels like this is yet another lie by her sister. She finally asks Kate, do you love him? And Kate doesn't say a word. Lady Mary takes Edwina out of the room to get away from it all. But before she leaves, Lady Mary does yell at Kate for keeping so much from her. Kate ends up going and hiding in a closet and crying. The Bridgerton family heads to another room in the castle, thinking that Edwina will eventually come to her senses. The only one who's not real assured of that is Eloise, who says that maybe Edwina just realized that marriage is a prison. 
But it's Benedict who points out that maybe just Antony needs to be left alone. Now, this is pretty embarrassing for the queen as well. She's the one hosting this wedding. She doesn't always do that. So she calls Lady Danbury into a private room to have a conversation with her about what exactly is happening. The big concern for the queen isn't the fact that these two aren't going to get married. She doesn't really care about that. It's more of the look of the queen's diamond of the season getting cold feet in her palace. And what Lady Whistledown will eventually write, which is blaming the queen. When Danbury starts pointing out that maybe they're in a situation that can't be salvaged, the queen says, it better be salvaged. You vouched for this family. I never would have thought of making Edwina the diamond of the season had it not been for you. This is as much your fault as it is anyone's. Danbury says that she'll go find Edwina and figure out something. And in the meantime, the queen instructs the guards to not let anyone leave. The nuptials will continue to go on shortly. So all of the wedding guests head out to the garden for the time being. And rumors are swirling among the guests on what they just witnessed. And this scandal could be exactly what the Featheringtons need. With everybody outside, they just need to redirect everybody's attention to Prudence, which isn't going to be easy. So Lady Featherington goes over and instructs Prudence to go and show it off. Lord Featherington does his part. It doesn't take long for those men to find their way to Lord Featherington. He starts pitching them about these ruby mines, but there's one man that is a little hesitant to buy into this scheme, and it's Mondrich. You can't blame him. He's weary of anyone with the Featherington name after what happened last season. Both Mondrich and Featherington end up trading subtle insults back and forth until eventually Featherington just excused himself from the conversation. He did so because Lady Featherington wanted to talk to him. She wants an update on if he's come to any agreements, and the answer is no, but he's close. And she tries to put his feet to the fire because they may never have a situation quite like this again. The whole town is out there. She's also realized that what they need to do is focus on people who aren't real beloved in the town. That way, when the money doesn't roll in like they're expecting, it won't be that big of a deal. Nobody will think poorly of them. Lord Featherton asks, who makes that list? And it's basically everybody but the Bridgertons. Jack starts once again hitting on Lady Featherington. He's attracted to her because he feels like he just met the female version of himself. That they could be partners, but also partners in another way. The other Featherington, Penelope, gets found by Eloise, who has been thinking about their conversation earlier in the day. Eloise did think that the bond that she had with Theo was just intellectual, but now she's thinking maybe it's more than that. She needs to find out what Theo feels in the situation. Penelope thinks this is a terrible idea for many reasons, but also warns Eloise of what happened to Lady Mary when she married, quote, beneath her. Eloise shoots back, I'm not talking about marriage, Pen. I just want to know. When Penelope pressures Eloise on why she has to know, Eloise says, I can accept certain mysteries, but this one, I can actually find out yes or no. The not knowing is torment. So at the behest of her best friend, Eloise does end up sneaking out of that party because she figures no one's going to notice I'm not here anyway and heading to go see Theo. She gently poses the question to Theo. Dad, do you think about me? I mean, because sometimes I think about you. And the answer to that question is yes. Theo goes inside the printing press and has a bunch of books waiting for her. He tells her, I thought you might like these. Eloise is completely unaware, though, that one of the king's men followed her there and is watching her every move. Back in the castle, though, Antony feels like it's best if he goes and has a conversation with Edwina. But Edwina says, please tell me you're not going to come in here and tell me more lies. So he more pitches her on the roles that they have in society and how they simply just align for this marriage. He doesn't care about the lack of a dowry. He doesn't care about the insults of the Sheffields. But he also can't say yes when she asks, is that because you love me? He continues to try to pitch Edwina on why they should continue to go on with the marriage. And eventually Edwina has to ask, what role is Kate going to play in all this? He tells her she's going to have no place in our future. Once we marry, she's returning to India. She tells Anthony, I'm going to need a little more time to think about what I want to do. As Anthony is leaving the room that Edwina's in, he runs into Kate. Kate doesn't really want to talk to him, but Anthony follows her into the closet. He asks Kate to do something to salvage this wedding. And Kate tells him there's not a lot she can do at this point. Edwina has simply figured everything out. But she does go and have a conversation with Edwina, apologizing for everything, admitting that at one point she did have feelings for the Vi account, but that doesn't matter anymore. Kate basically makes the same pitch to Edwina as Antony made. You deserve this. And what Edwina can't figure out is, why doesn't Kate deserve this? Those two are clearly in love. And the reason that Kate gives is the fact that she's been working towards this her entire life, finding Edwina a match, making Edwina happy before she thinks of herself. In a way, her lack of being selfish has made her selfish. The conversation and apology attempt from Kate does not go over well. Edwina even brings up the fact that they're not sisters. They're half-sisters. She ends the conversation by saying, If I go through with this wedding, it'll have nothing to do with you. But she still needs more time. 
The apology that Kate gave to Edwina isn't the only apology that goes down that day. With everybody kind of in a holding pattern, Lady Danbury ends up running into Lady Bridgerton and apologizing for what happened at the dinner. But these two are old friends, and it doesn't take long for them to rekindle their friendship and actually have a good laugh about the situation. They're both in a crappy spot. You might as well laugh about it. The two women then go and talk to the queen, but the queen is steadfast that this wedding better be going down. And the problem is, neither Danbury or Bridgerton have an answer on that. As they're telling the queen that it is Edwina's decision, Edwina comes in, and they start trying to do what Danbury and Bridgerton were doing. Kiss the queen's ass, thanking her profusely, but the queen is sick of it. She just wants the question answered. Are they getting married or not? Before Edwina can even answer, the king runs into the room. Everybody is shocked to see him. No one more so than the queen. He starts talking about how he's late for the ceremony and starts apologizing to the queen for being late. He's clearly confused, and when the queen asks a bunch of her men to help the king back into his chambers, he gets really upset. That's when Edwina steps in. Edwina thinks that the king thinks it's his wedding day, so she starts telling him that the queen is going to make an excellent queen, but for now, it's probably best that he rest. This works. He goes back into his chambers and closes the door. Everybody then leaves the room, and shortly after that, both Antony and Kate receive word that they're to meet in the same room that Antony was to marry Edwina in. With Kate, Edwina, and Antony in the same room together, she tells Antony that she can't marry him because Antony can't provide her with what she deserves. She then turns her attention to her sister, criticizing her for sticking with this notion that Kate has sacrificed her own happiness for Edwina's because Edwina has her own life. Kate shouldn't use Edwina as an excuse on why she isn't happy. Edwina then leaves the room and it's just Kate and Antony. Kate doesn't want to leave, but eventually she has to. She says her goodbyes, and then finally, after six freaking episodes, the two end up kissing. Took you long enough. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought this sucked. Make sure to be nice in the comment section. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen there, I'll get it up in a few days not to worry. And I have merchandise, you know? So go buy a mug or something. It's never too early to think about Christmas gifts, folks. Once again, thank you for checking out this recap.